Yes, good morning to everyone. Let us start the event. Good morning everyone. Let us begin today's event with a small prayer. Sushila Subramanian, former HOD and Associate Professor, Department of Mathematics, Lady Dow College, Madurai, who has accepted our invitation to address the staff in the topic A Glance at Futurology, Hayes Theory. Welcome to you, Madam. I take pleasure in welcoming the principal to this one day webinar. I am happy to welcome. Dr. Maidin Bibi and Dr. Shanti, who has arranged this virtual meeting. I hope the speaker through. To all, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I extend a warm welcome to all to this webinar. First of all, I would like to thank our principal and management who gave us permission to organize this webinar. It's my immense pleasure in introducing our Honorable Chief Guest, Mrs. Sushila Subramaniam, former Head of the Department and Associate Professor, Lady Dow College, Madre. We are indeed privileged to have an eminent person, our Chief Guest, today. I want to give a small uh, introduce uh, our, to our resource person. She finished her degree from School of Mathematics, Madre Kamaraj University. She served as a lecturer, associate professor, and head of the department in the Department of Mathematics, Lido College, during 1974 to 2010. Also, she worked as Senator Secretary, College Academic Council Secretary, Convener Curriculum Planning Evaluation Committee, etc. She is the coordinator of Human Rights Education from 2000 to 2005. She organized and attended national and state level workshops in mathematics, human rights education and futurology. She presented papers in catastrophe theory at national level conferences. She had been teaching the interdisciplinary course Futurology 
for UG and PG from 1987 to 2010. Dear ma'am, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more and become more, you are a leader, definitely you are a leader ma'am. Dear friend, it is the time for our speaker to share a thought on today's topic, a plan for the future of the chaos here. I would hand over the session to a resource person. Over to you, ma'am. Ma'am, kindly unmute your audio, ma'am. Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, I thank for College. I thank the Professor for College, the Principal Dr. T. Palaniswari, and the Convener Mrs. D. Roslyn Yanakumari, the Organizing Secretaries Dr. Maideen and Dr. P. Shanti for the platform that's provided to me. I am a mathematics person, always interested in the design in the nature and the patterns in the reality. So in, in the late 1980s, when I was to offer a course, a one semester course for two hours per week to the students who, are, who have done mathematics in the plus two level, but we, who are not undergoing any course in mathematics at the college level. I, uh, I decided on giving a course in Futurology. Futurology is a, a science of predicting the future trends. It's called Future Studies in U.S. and Futuristics in European countries. And uh, you know, the human race has undergone so many shocks. It has changed from the normalic to the settled one by the agricultural wave and from the unorganized population to institutionalized one with schools and offices during the industrial period and the industrial wave. And then it has become more technological during the technological wave and it has become an IT one. Yes, a technology wave has taken it by a tremendous shock. At each stage, the human race has gone through a lot of shock, but it was able to adapt and it can withstand all the shock. So, um, when, when we are undergoing these shocks, it's better that we are we know the undercurrent. You know, we cannot stop it, we cannot act on it, but we will know the undercurrent. You know, you cannot, you can never step into the same river twice. You will be different, and the river will also be different in content and current. But it's better to have an idea about the undercurrent, and that's what we do by predicting the future. When we started the course, um, I had just the book Future Shock by Alvin Dockley, Al Alvin Dockley, uh, Alvin Dockley, and a small booklet on anticipatory ma management by Dr. Seth. And we started the course with just brainstorming, brainstorming sessions on very fanciful things like the um, uh, pink color dinosaur, and then we had a fourth analysis on phones people can carry in their hands. Remember it was in the 80s. And we had talked about the, we had a scenario building and talked about the uh, impact of women working at home with their own computers. And we, had, we were thinking about, we were talking on the, we were talking about the different impacts, the social, the economical, the political, the legal, the industrial and the technological impacts of all these 
technologies that were upcoming at that time. Then we had departments of meteorology in the Madurai Commonwealth University and in the um, Pondicherry University. And these things we had, we, we were able to get a lot of material, a lot of material. And then we had all these discussions go, going on. We introduced extrapolation, we introduced curve fitting, and we did a lot of regression. And we had uh, actual te techniques of technology assessment, technology forecasting assessment, and technology um, technology impact analysis. We had them all. And then um, when it comes to the outcome of the course, when it comes to the outcome of the course, we had at the end of the course, our students were able to uh, see the connectivity, see the identify the four things that will be influencing the future, and we have they were conversant on the future trends, and some of them have been able to include a paragraph of the future trends pertaining to their own um, disciplines in their projects. That was the outcome that we had in that. When we talk about the trends, we have we can have a cyclic trend. Okay? And a cyclic trend that you may know will be coming in cycles. And we'll be having um, uh, we may we may actually think about the cyclic trends in um, fancy uh, fancy or the, the current uh, trend. Okay. You know, the back button uh, blouses and the boat neck blouses and the baggy pants have now back, come back to woe. And uh, seasonal trends, you know, they will be about the marigolds and jasmines blooming in time, the oddy sales and the actual seasons, the actual four seasons. So these things we can predict periodically. And then there were continuous changes, like uh, uh, when, whenever you have the different things um, happening continuously, knowing the initial conditions and the time, you can predict the, you can give a prediction about what will be happening at a future day by extrapolating the trend curve. And that was going on like this. So, uh, whenever you had a future uh, future occurrence that you have to predict, you can predict with uh, um, with approximately using the extrapolation extrapolation methods with a scatter diagram, fitting in a curve and extrapolating the curve and finding the value at that point. And if there is a, a difference between the actual occurrence and the um, and the predicted one, then you can say that it's just an error. And we can tolerate errors. When you are predicting the um, happening of the Halley's uh, format, the Halley's format has a periodicity of 75 years. And if there is a discrepancy of 10 years or 5 years, it doesn't really matter. Okay. But to come across systems, where you will be having very drastic changes. The drastic changes are happening during catastrophe and chaos and that's what I'm going to talk about today. The catastrophe may be happening, it will be actually um, happening when you have a system moving under two conflicting factors. One of them will be dominating, the other will be getting dominated, but both of them will be increased. There will be a point where there will be a sudden change in the behavior of the system. The dominated becomes the um, dominant and the dominant becomes the dominated. That is sometimes called a structural fracture. And this may happen at any unpredictable time. 
This is not at all predictable. The time of catastrophe is not at all predictable because if it is predictable, then it's no more a catastrophe. It loses all its charm. Okay. So when it comes to a catastrophe, you'll be having. Uh, let me uh, explain that with a typical example. You may be having two dogs. One dog enters into the territory of the other, and it gets chased. The chased dog will be running, running away, and as it runs, it will have the fear increasing, also its frustration increasing. These two are the two conflicting factors that will decide its behavior. It keeps on running, and there will come a time when there will be a very small change in the frustration or in the anger. That will trigger that to turn back and attack. So it just uh, falls from the flight mode to the fighting mode. It becomes aggressive. It turns back and attacks the chasing dog. And even if the chasing dog retreats, this angry mode will remain, and it, and it will be going on for uh, some time. Most probably, the dog will remain in that angry dog, angry state. Look at the model that is given. That is the classical model given for the flight and fight catastrophe. You'll be having the supposing the dog is moving in the upper part of the paper. The, the I'm sorry, the lower part of the paper. The transition will be more smooth. It will be going from the um, Flight stage to the fight stage, moving like this, moving just like that. Okay, but supposing it it goes up and it goes near the critical point, then there will be a um, there will be a dipping. That will be the dipping point. You'll be having the dog moving in the upper surface. The the behavior of the dog moving in the upper surface. It will be going. Can we have the previous slide? It will be going up to the cusp point. Yes, it will be going up to the cusp point. When it comes to the uh, cusp point, the difference between the two strategies will be very large, right? And so, when it falls from one to the other, it cannot help that falling. It will fall from one surface to the other surface. From the fight, from the flight mode. To the fighting mode, and uh, as the as it is near the um, critical point, the fight will be more and the impact will be more. Once it reaches the lower surface, that is the fight mode, it goes on in that surface. Okay, and it will be it will never come back. Okay. That is catastrophe. The same thing happens with bullying. There may be bullying going on in the workplace or at the school. There will be a person who gets always bullied by the other people. He he gets irritated as well. He feels helpless. So the helplessness increases and the irritability is also going up, and he manages somehow. But then, sometime he will enter into the the threshold of. The, the catastrophe, the threshold of the crisis point. At some point, he will decide not to go through bullying anymore. And a very slight provocation from the bullies, a very slight comment, will provoke him, and he will give away, and he will put his thumb on the table and say that no more bullying. He will come to the fighting mode. He will start shouting back, and uh, he will remain in that shouting mode after that. He may become a bully himself. Yes, that's all about the catastrophe. You need not consider catastrophe as a. Um, you need not consider catastrophe with a bad connotation always. It can be considered as a miracle too. For example, if you consider the Consumer, um, consumer loyalty. Yes, 
consider the consumer loyalty that uh, that is being tested in all the online trading nowadays. You may be attracted towards a product. You may go on buying that product, and the price will be high, but uh, in proportion, and at times not even in proportion, it will be get just get high, and you go on buying that. Even though you are not very happy about the price hike, but then there will come a time where you will start thinking whether buying that product is all that worth. That is the threshold of catastrophe. And then a very slight change in the price will make you give up that, give up that product. You are buying that product and go on to the go on, go on to some other product. You will never go back to the original product there, okay? And uh, also, it will be a miracle. Yes, you save your money, and uh, and you know that the geometrical models for catastrophe will be the inverted uh, U, where you have a tipping point, and the cusp model as shown in the screen. Uh, that is that is actually the first 3D origami fold also. So you have you have to fold the paper like this, and you will be having an upper surface, a lower surface, which will signify the two different modes, and you will be getting a shift in the mode during catastrophe. That's what is happening during catastrophe. And uh, when I uh, tried to search in the net, in the net, I was I had. Uh, uh, I had so many papers in the recent 10 years being trying to fit in this catastrophe theory to the different aspects of life. Um, catastrophe theory can be used in the traffic flow, in finding the blocks in the neural networks, in finding the um, stumbling stones in the tunnels. And also, you will be having um, that used in electrochemistry, in quantum mechanics, as well in the risk theory that happens in management, in the stock market, and in the tax payment, and uh, in the response theory in the medical field also. You will be, you, you know, there will be sports people who will be in the height of their uh, career may suddenly get a muscle pull and they will give up the career. That, that will make them just fall down on the ground. That happens because you have the two different conflicting factors acting. One will be the semantic one, the other one will be the cognitive one. The semantic one will be the, the perspiration, the, all the um, blood being drained, and then you will be having exhaustion, all those things. And on the other side, you will be having the negative thoughts and fear about the, um, the, the person, the opponent. And these things will be acting on one another. There will, be, there will come one point at which a slight increase in one of them will overcome the other. And the sports person just gives up playing for stop. The same thing, uh, this is also catastrophic theory is also used in forming the responses and questions to determine the thin line between sanity and insanity in a person. That is in the psychological uh, safety control. So, and actually people are trying to get into more and more applications of catastrophic theory and trying to fit in catastrophe theory to all the systems, all the behaviors where you have a sudden, unpredictable uh, change, a structural fracture in the system where one, where the dominated uh, force becomes the dominating one and the dominating one becomes the dominated. That's about the catastrophe theory. When it comes to chaos, you will be having, uh, uh, you will be having the different, um, uh, different points in space and the different uh, 
instance in the time timeline. There may be points where you'll be having which are vulnerable to um, this crisis, which will be like this. You'll be having chaos to be actually a, um, a set of initial conditions, and the state is immensely dependent on that, very sensitively dependent on the system is very sensitively dependent on the set of initial conditions. There will be um, forces of attraction and repulsion between these initial conditions also. They are called the bifurcations. They, uh, they, uh, they, are, they will be uh, affecting each other. And these impacts of attractors on one another will also be very immense. Yes, that is sometimes called the butterfly effect, where the fluttering of a butterfly's wing will be uh, reflected in the uh, hurricanes somewhere, uh, somewhere far away. Okay. And then you will be having this interconnectedness between these attractors. And the, and the very slight change at random will be seemingly random at some random time a slight change in the initial conditions will make the whole system flare up and that is called the crisis. The crisis may uh, happen randomly, it will be seemingly random but there will be a regularity in the happening of this crisis. You see there will be some period, the period may be very long but there will be some period at which earthquakes and uh, forest fires will get repeated. Yes. So there will be some regularity in the happening of these irregularities. And a very good example of an example for, actually I can explain that with the earthquake. The chaos can be explained with the, with the earthquake. See, at the vulnerable points, you will be having so many uh, initial conditions, like the pull from the center of the earth, the undercurrent in the water, the fluid uh, mechanisms that are, um, I mean, the fluid uh, curls and uh, the fluid um, attractions and repulsions from the underground water, and there will be the moving rocks colliding on one another, and there will be magnetic fields from the different materials of which the ground is made up of. All these things will be the initial conditions. The state, the, the vulnerable state will be there. But then a small change in one of these initial conditions will make the hope, make the, um, the outthrow happen, the outbreak happen. And there will be a large throwing up of the material that happens in earthquake and in Valcano. A very good example for that, a geometric example for the um, crisis point and chaos, and actually the chaos will be the fractals. You will be having a regular figure which resembles the set of initial conditions and then you will be having interactions, I mean iterations going on. You will be adding on um, triangles on the side of the big triangle and it goes on and on and on on each side and at one point the whole thing will be having a snowflake being formed but, at, and, but if it goes on for a long time it will just flare up to fractal dust okay? and that's what is happening in the chaos and at, at the crisis point. So as I have told you, the chaos is a state of a system, whereas catastrophe is a happening in the system, and these two are now being used to serve as tools to um, model reality, especially when you have all these um, outbreaks, all these outbreaks like the earthquake, the volcanic eruption, and the extinction of some of the species and the morphogenesis of some species 
and the like the social outbreak will be having the group and mob uh, behavior then epidemics like the different types of epidemics and viruses and uh, you know that chaos will be magical this also need not have a bad connotations they can be considered as magical because at the end of every crisis there will be new life coming there will be new life coming up so uh, we need not be very desperate about the outbreak we need not be desperate about the chaos we need not be desperate about the crisis that we are undergoing now we can be hopeful because the new normalcy that we come up will be really wonderful and it will be a new life for the whole human race uh you know i happen to read in the recent um few weeks i happen to read a scenario building by somebody it says that the the uh, street yellowstone park in us may flare up and it may go unnoticed because of the covid uh, assault that we have now but it may result in just like the uh, just like the volcanic uh, eruption in iceland some centuries back it may affect the whole world and it may cause famine everywhere and just like the um, outbreak that we had in the um, in uh, philippines some years back it may cover the whole uh, atmosphere with the dust and so the flights may not be able to go and the whole connectivity will be lost in the global level you see the as i have told you but you see that's a very actually i should have told you this um say the the fractals will be the models that will be coming up to model everything in nature because actually in life uh, there is more complexity than simplicity every uh, place is a chaos and every moment is a crisis and you will be having uh, more complexity than the uh, than the simplicity i showed because as you can see the mountains are not cones and the clouds are not just ellipses they are something different from that and you see that the fractals can model them rather than these regular figures and they are very beautiful too isn't it to look at and if you look at the um the fractals that serve as uh, servers the models for chaos they are the most beautiful the most spectacular things that a mathematician can see they are actually um, a sort of um, soup to the soul of a mathematician that gives him the immense pleasure of being a mathematics person so now as i was telling you there was a very uh, horrible scenario building about the volcano eruption that may happen in 2030 it may not happen but i have seen i happen to visit a place called crater lake the great crater lake um some two years back that is uh, that is the um after math of a very uh, very um, powerful volcano eruption some 400000 years back that happened in oregon us and it's in the and the big mount mosama that that fell into that fell apart because of the eruption and that caused a caldera a caldera of being formed and that caldera contains the crater lake this is the deepest lake in us and it has a unique blue color and after these many years it is the best uh, scenic place that anybody can go and see in life and you it's a uh, oh, it's actually an outdoor um, 
laboratory or outdoor classroom for us to learn the chaos theory. We can appreciate chaos there. The aftermath of chaos is poses an immense beauty. And you see that there is a thick forest around and there is a there are um, pinnacles of boomies and there are uh, rivers, Ocidion rivers and actual roaming rivers and a drive of about 53 kilometers around the rim of that lake actually ma makes us feel the resilience in nature. So nature will be always resilient. Nature will be always resilient and if you look at the crisis that we have today, it's a very insignificant one. When you look at it in the vast canopy of the human kind and the time that is immortal, in, uh, immeasurable and eternal. In the eternal timeline, in the vast canopy of the universe and the cosmos, the crisis that we are undergoing is a very, very, very tiny one. And this will also be pass by. Let me uh, see this uh, crater lake I wanted to show you because it's an attestation to the resilience of nature and the uh, need for man to go and enjoy nature's beauty. Then let me uh, finish my talk with a few words about being a mathematician. Mathematics need not be always at its heel to go take orders from the other sciences to model their, their, their uh, problems, go back and work on it and serve, it, serve them back with that solution. It need not be. Yes? It can as well be a queen who deserves an ivory um, castle, I should say, ivory castle. She needs time to ponder and muse and then she, may, she will need the time to enjoy herself. Mathematics is a language where you will be interacting with one another when you have a group of people with the same mathematical temperament. Mathematics is an art in which you will be having, you will be internalizing and enjoying the beauty of mathematics and the beauty of the nature around you and it's actually a way of life. Thank you all for the time given and for the patient listening. Thank you. Then, thank you ma'am. If something comes from your heart, it will reach the heart of your audience. Thank you. Thank you so much ma'am. Some of the queries in the chat box, should I prescribe here ma'am? Sure. Does an outbreak of an epidemic be explained using chaos theory? That's the question, ma'am. Does an outbreak of an epidemic be explained using chaos theory? It's the question. Can we explain the outbreak? I mean, can we explain the outbreak of virus you mean? They are mentioning like does an outbreak of epidemic be explained using chaos theory. The epidemic can be explained using chaos theory, they are asking. Yeah, uh, it can be uh, fitted into being a chaos, provided you know the initial conditions. For, the, um, for this outbreak of virus, we must know the origin of the virus. We must know the origin of the virus and then the other conditions that will be uh, affecting the growing of the virus and then we must also know how much connected these um, viruses are with one another and then how much they affect each other and then we must also know that as I told you every point is a chaos point and every crisis is a every um, moment is a crisis moment. Yes. And therefore, it may happen anywhere. It may happen anywhere and it may happen at any moment. Yes. It is a chaos. It is a chaos, but we can only 
observe that. Just as we can only observe the undercurrent in the change. We can observe that, we cannot act on that. Because if we can act on that and if we can change that, it's no more a chaos. It becomes an expected event, which is predictable. It is a term. I, I Thank you, ma'am. Dear participants, if you are having any queries, please unmute, unmute your mic and ask. Dear participants, do you have any queries? You please unmute your mic and ask. I think no queries, ma'am. Okay. The good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, the good teacher inspires a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mandy. Let me call upon our um, Dr. P. Shanti to give a vote of thanks. A pleasant good morning to all. I am Dr. P. Shanti, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, Standard Fireworks, Rajaratnam College for Women, Sivadas. It is the time to thank everyone who made this event possible and successful. First, I would like to express my gratitude to our resource person, Madam Mrs. Susila Subramanian, Associate Professor and former Head of the Department, Lady Toe College, uh, to honor this webinar with her inspirational thoughts and a detailed speech on the topic, A Glance at Futurology, a Chaos Theory. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable speech. Next, I like to extend my gratitude to our college management and Madam Principal and the head of the department for their constant support and uh, the, the execution of the event. Thank you, everybody. And also, I'd like to thank our uh, department faculty, all the faculty, for their cooperation in arranging all the process. Thank you so much. And then, uh, I like to express my special thanks to Dr. A. Maidin Devi, Assistant Professor in our department, for initiating this webinar uh, to execute in this better manner. And then it's my duty to express my gratitude to Mrs. Vasanti, Assistant Professor in Department of Computer Science, for streaming this webinar in YouTube Live. Thank you so much, ma'am. Finally, it is very, very important to thank all the participants of our own institution and also from various colleges from different states for active participation and their patience listening and valuable feedback. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep on learning. Thank you so much. Dear participants, the feedback link will be provided in your chat box.